Guys, on today's video, we are back out here with the bees and I want to address one of the most common comments that I received on the honey extracting video. It was two videos ago that I posted that. So we'll get into that in just a minute. First, I want to check on the little split that we made last time. This is the little split that we made on that last honey extracting video. If you remember, if you've seen that video, you'll remember that basically what happened is I was going through these hives trying to find honey and I just happened to come across a queen honey bee on the backside of this other hive over here. I don't know where she came from, don't know where she was going, uh, but either way I got a free queen out of it and we put it put her in this box and took some frames from some other hives and managed to make a split. Now I have not been in this hive. I've lifted the lid up a few times just to kind of look at it from the top, but I haven't dug into this hive since then. That means it's been, I think about a week, maybe six days or so. So let's tear into it and see. We want to see a couple things. Of course, we want to know if the queen is still in there. And if she is, is she laying eggs yet? Well, you can see here, we've got good traffic coming in and out at the front of the hive, which is a really, really good sign. I don't hear any kind of a drone going on inside of the hive that would indicate that they don't have a queen. I did have a feeder on this hive uh, the, a day or a, a couple days after I made the split, but there ended up being a lot of traffic out here on the hive, so I was kind of concerned that I would spur a robbing situation, so I took that off. So let's go ahead and tear into it. I'm going to attempt this without a bee suit because hopefully they're calm today, but let's see what we got it is a hot day today guys goodness it's hot and super bright to give them a little bit of smoke not much it's the time of year you've got to be very careful with your smoker because you could start a grass fire so quick so quick with a smoker so one of the things that I'm seeing that's very encouraging is there is a fairly, fairly good population of bees in this hive. One of the concerns of making splits like this so close to the mother hive is the fact that a lot of them are going to go back, but it looks like that a lot of them have stayed. Good population in this hive here. And we'll just set that frame to the side so I can have a little room to work in here. And I do hope they stay calm because bees do prefer to uh, sting faces and stuff. I'm not seeing a queen just yet. Oh, there she is. She is in here. That's great. She made it. She's hard to keep up with. I'm trying to show you. Oh, there she is right there. There she is. So it really is a big deal that she is in there and alive, but mainly we want to know if she is laying eggs yet. And I have seen a couple of eggs, but I'd love to see a few more in a consistent pattern of eggs. So let's keep looking here and see what we can find. Hope that y'all can see this here. Let me get some of these bees out of the way. So there we go. So we got a lot of capped brood in this frame and that of course is from the mother hive and these cells that you see that are open along in here, those cells are empty. They don't have, uh, I'm not seeing, no, I'm not seeing anything in those cells at all. Now this frame here does have a few eggs in it. I'll try to get an up close shot to show you all, but there are a few eggs in this, uh, in this frame. Not a lot though, not as many as I would have liked to have seen, but she has begun laying eggs, which is encouraging. She's actually on that frame right there. She's a runny thing. She loves to run around. So guys, I'm not totally sure what just happened here because I obviously wasn't paying attention. That's probably why this happened. So while I was looking for frames to get a good view of the eggs and stuff. Somehow I smashed the queen. So I guess that's the end of this box, <laughs> man. So guys, I have moved to a shady spot behind the beehives here. It is a scorcher of a day today and uh, I wanted to stand 
in the shade to talk to the camera instead of out in the sunlight and i did not get any video of the eggs in that hive i just put it all back together i think there was some discouragement that went along with killing that queen as you as you might imagine um but i did want to talk about those eggs and really the brood and the beehive in general because i i, I pull frames out of hives a lot and i talk about the brood but i don't think i don't know that i've ever really explained what the brood is. So the brood in a beehive is everything from the egg to the larva to the pupa, everything before the bee hatches. So basically what happens is the queen comes around and she will lay an egg in a cell and it looks like a very, very tiny grain of rice down in the bottom of that cell. And that egg will spend three days as an egg. And the next stage is a larva and it looks like a little worm down in the bottom of that cell and the egg will spin or the larva rather will be a larva for five days and then that hatches out into a pupa which looks a little more like a little bee and that pupa will spend 13 days as a pupa and uh, credit to the apiarist for those for those links of time there that was really really good information that's the apiarist.org there if y'all are interested um so the queen, I, uh, I managed to smash that queen, which is a shame. I have, I have not killed very many queens in the years that I have been beekeeping, uh, and it was, it, it happens sometimes. I guess I just wasn't paying enough attention, but I'm going to try to make some lemonade out of this situation. I'm in contact right now with a queen supplier, and I'm going to try to get maybe five queens, sell all of the honey that we produced this year, which wasn't a whole lot, and pay for five new queens, put a new queen in that hive and split the other hives and uh, get some more colonies going here so we can maybe up our honey production. And speaking of honey production, that's what I wanted to talk about in this video mainly. So so one of the most common comments that I got on the honey processing or extracting video that I put out two videos ago was do you plant anything for the bees or uh, do you think you should start planting something for the bees or maybe you should plant something for the bees or whatever and I get that comment a lot and I really do think that it comes from it comes from a good place. It comes from a well-meaning place. Uh, people want to help the bees. Um, bees are susceptible to lots of different things that can kill them and why not help them out, right? So I really do believe that it comes from a good place um, trying to help out the bees because they're so, so beneficial to us. But I wanted to address why it's really not a practical solution for beekeepers to up honey production or pollen production or whatever. Now, and I, 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 I don't want to disparage somebody who is maybe looking to plant some pollinator friendly crops in their backyard or in their flower beds to attract pollinators because that's kind of a cool thing, right? It helps out the bees and you can go out and you can watch honeybees feeding around your house, which is super, super cool. And I also don't want to disparage a small time beekeeper like myself who wants to plant stuff for the bees because if you do that, you're really not hurting anything, right? It's not like, you're really not hurting anything, more power to you. But as far as honey production goes, that's not a practical solution to increasing honey production or pollen production or whatever your goal might be. And I've got a list of reasons why that is. The first reason, and I, I think this is probably the most important reason, is just the foraging area of honeybees. So honeybees were created to forage, right? They're natural born foragers. That's just what they do. And they can travel anywhere from two to four miles. I have actually read that in a, a rough year, a very dry year, they can actually go up to five miles to try to find resources for their hive. A two mile radius from a beehive, if a bee flies two miles in one direction from the hive, another bee out of that hive flies the opposite direction, that is a four mile diameter, right? That is an 8,000 acre area that those bees are foraging after. And if you plant one single acre of anything in front of your hives, that is just a drop in the bucket of what they're actually, what is actually available to them. So planting a very small area in front of the hives or close to the hives in comparison to what they've actually got available in the wild, that is not gonna up production in the least. A second reason is just the limited area that most beekeepers are gonna have available. So this, 
this area right here that I am on is a 53 acre property, but only five acres of that are actually cleared land and available to be planted in something. And if you're a backyard beekeeper or something like that, you might, you might have like half an acre or an acre total. So there's just not a whole lot of space in the first place on which to plant crops. Um, even if I planted all 53 acres, that's still a drop in the bucket to the 8,000 acres that they're foraging in the first place. A third issue is that different plants bloom at different times. So this is the University of Georgia's website, which has a list of the different things in Georgia. That's my area. There were things in Georgia that bloom either to provide nectar or pollen to honeybees. And if we start in February, February starts red maple, then it goes to red bud, uh, March, native blueberry, canola, henbit into April, you've got tupelo and apple and black locust and blackberry. April and May, you've got crimson clover, Dutch clover, red clover. You get into May, you get privet and rhododendron and the list goes on and on. So my point here is that different things are, are blooming and ceasing to bloom at different times. So if I were to plant whole bunches of clover around here, they would only have a very small window in which to forage from that clover. Now, having said that, I plant food plots on this property and the seed mix that I use does have clover in it. And to be fair, they tear that clover up. They really, really enjoy that clover. Over. And uh, so it's, it's not like it's a totally wasted effort for the bees, but um, it's a small window. I would actually have to plant a variety of different things in order to stretch out the usefulness of my plantings. Now, if you haven't gotten totally bored with this video, here's my fourth reason. My fourth reason is, and I'm, I'm probably gonna have to explain this one because it, I don't think I wrote it down very well. There are no massive self-contained honey farms. Now, what I mean by that is there are no farms that are 1,000 acre farms with 1,000 beehives on it, which both raise bees and plant crops, which are self-contained on those farms. So we have corn farms right we have these massive thousand acre plus corn farms and soybean farms and so on and so forth and those places produce tons and tons and bushels and bushels of corn and soybeans and so on and so forth but we don't see honey farms that specialize in one particular thing that they have planted which tells me uh, it's probably not a practical approach because I feel like if it were a practical approach, there would be these gargantuan honey farms all over the place doing exactly that, producing crops, very specific crops, and selling those very specific crops. We don't see that. What we do see is beekeepers trucking bees all literally all over the country. There are thousands and thousands of beehives that migrate to California during the almond pollination time. And there are thousands of beehives that head to different areas in, in the mountains to get sourwood honey. And then there's folks that truck their hives to different places to get tupelo honey and gallberry honey and clover honey and all these different things. But they're not planting things on a farm they're transporting the bees to the things that are already growing and i feel like if it was a if it was a practical way to do it we would actually see huge farms with bees and with whatever planted for the bees all right guys fifth and final reason i promise i'm almost done here fifth and final reason that i don't think planting things for your bees is a practical solution to increasing honey production so it's a three-part reason logistics cost and time And what I mean by this is, so in order to go do this and to really get the best return, I'd have to do it right, which means I would have to go out and I would have to get the soil ready to plant. I would have to spray herbicide to kill the grass so that other things could actually grow. I would, might have to put lime down to get the pH right. I would have to use fertilizer or manure to amend the soil so that things would actually grow. I would have to buy seeds. I would have to burn lots and lots of diesel fuel in the tractor to accomplish these things. I would have to burn gas in the truck going to pick up these things or I would have to pay shipping costs to get these things shipped out to me. Um, logistics, 
my equipment. I've got a tractor and a Hara. Those are probably the two main things that I would need, but I might want to improve things. I might want to get a cultipacker or some kind of a planter. Things would be constantly breaking and that costs money to fix. Uh, time, it would take a lot of time and I've got other things to do. I would, I would actually much rather spend that time planting food plots in the fall for the deer than planting things for the bees that I don't think is gonna be a whole lot of a return. So those are my reasons, uh, like it or not, those are the reasons that I have that I don't believe planting things for your bees is a practical solution. Again, if you wanna plant some things in your flower beds or in your backyard to uh, it, attract pollinators, by all means, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think that's a, a noble cause. It certainly is not hurting anything, but I don't think it's a great solution to increasing honey production or just all of a sudden blowing up your honey production or pollen production for your bees in a year. Um, what do y'all think? Let me know what you think. I know what a lot of y'all think because that's where I got the motivation to do this video is I got a lot of comments talking about planting things for the bees. But let me know what you think in the comment section. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. This video probably was not the probably was not in line with popular opinion, but it's, it's, it's kind of how I feel about it. Um, let me know what you think in the comments. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video and I will see y'all on the next one.